Good morning, guys. I'm sitting here in a plot that I'm trying to experiment with. Um, I try, try trying different things every year, and this is one of the things. I've had luck with overseeding clover with grape, and it worked well. This time I'm trying to overseed a clover plot with an actual brassica mix with purple top turnips and kale and, and everything. And um, so what I ended up doing in this established plot, which I made last summer, I got rid of the rye this spring because that's how I established my clover plots is I like using um, rye as a nurse crop when I plant my clover and it worked well. I terminated the rye by dragging it during the dough stage. You could crimp it, you could roll it, um, you could mow it. Um, then I started noticing broadleaf weeds, some Mars tail, and I went ahead and um, I mowed it over the 4th of July wheat. Then I came in here July 30th and I actually sprayed it with gly, a hundred percent. I didn't dilute the gly. I went with uh, what I normally do, which is uh, three ounces per gallon. Um, so I have a, uh, I put 11 gallons of water and I put a quart of gly in my ATV sprayer and I sprayed it. And uh, here we are. But then I overseeded it with um, my choice of Brasisca blends, with this no which is Northwoods Sweet Feast. It works well for me. You could use whatever you want. Um, and here I am, uh, August 13th, August 14th, and uh, it's the, the germination is great. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the germination, but I'm getting a lot of germination. And I'm hoping that since the clover is set back, the brassica will then get, a, get up above the clover. It won't be shaded out by the clover. And um, then I'm going to come back here. September Labor Day weekend and overseed this with uh, winter rye. So I'll have winter rye, clover, and brassica all in the same plot, just planted separately. So I'll show you what happens as I go, but I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what's going on right now. Thanks. Well, here's the plot. Just kind of want to. I'm putting clover in this plot permanently because the soil is um, pretty sandy and uh, it's pretty shaded too. As you can tell, it's kind of it's on the edge of a cedar swamp. It's a really good hunting spot. Um, Parker passed up a nice uh, seven point last year. I shot the 11 point out of here. We shoot a lot of deer in this plot. It's the complete plot is um, two tenths of an acre. So you have this small portion in the front. And then and I bring over here. And then there's the pinch point here. And then it goes up and then there's a larger portion up there. Um, of the plot but when you're in the blind back there that you can shoot you can you're high enough on the on the hill edge here on the top of the crest of the hill up there that you could actually see into the blind the plot in the back um, but then this would be any this would be for her with her crossbow the deer have to come into this section and um, I'm trying to get the best food that I can in here so that they come in front of her for the middle of this plot's 25 yards. But I just want to show you what's going on here. And as you can see, it's pretty sandy soil. Um, it, especially right here in this circle right here. Because what happens is, is the sand, it just rolls down. It's like all the silt comes down the top of this hill here. And you can see it, it kind of piles right here. So I'm trying to get some clover established in the sun. The lack of sun doesn't help. Um, but let's get down in here and see what we got going on. But 
you can clearly see you got good clover but if you look in here you're gonna have you got the the, the purple top turnip mix or all the persisco mix from northwoods if you look it's germinated great i mean i know there's probably some people that can't tell the difference between the clover and the persisco but right like right there that's that's a persisco um right here you know, as far as if it's kale or purple top turnips, I'm not that good either. But let's bring it down in here. Well, here, look at this. You can see where I missed a spot when I sprayed it. If you look back here, you can actually see it. You can see the line. It goes like this and goes around and then comes back. That whole section there I missed when I was spraying. And that's what the clover should look like. But, and then this section here has been sprayed. But as you can see, it's bouncing back really good. But it exposed enough soil. If you get down in there, you can see that there's the Versisco mix actually germinated in here. You can see it all through here. I don't know if I'm doing a good enough job with the camera. But you can see it's all germinated. I know Steve Denor was asking if I was doing the same thing. And uh, I want to get a good view for him because he's obviously interested in it. You can see that there's a, this, you can see the old rye. This is the rye from the, from when I terminated it in the spring. But like, you can just see all of it. And I'm assuming, or I'm hoping that what's going to happen is that, that those Brasisco plants will, now that they're germinated, they'll out compete the clover for the height and they won't get shaded out by the clover. And then I'll have a uh, clover brassica mix and I'll come in here Labor Day and I'll overseed all of this with rye. So there'll be grains, clover, and brassica all in one plot, but just planted separately and using glyphosate to, or if I said that correctly, because I know that's been going on how to correctly say that, but using that to set back the clover enough, long enough to allow the brassica to um, get established. So that's my goal. I'm going to put a camera on here and um, I'll get some updates, some pictures for you guys, for myself. And I'll uh, let you guys know how it's going. Thanks.